Welcome back everyone to Angela's Craft Room. I thought today I'd just do a tutorial on this easel card for you. It is a smaller easel card. It's only four and a quarter inches by four and a quarter inches. So it folds flat very nicely into a little square envelope. It's quite, it's not what, like one of the big ones. I've just used some ribbon as my stopper for it to sit up. And I thought I'd show you also how I sponge the clouds in if you ever wanted to do that. So let's just get started. So to start with we need a piece of cardstock which measures four and a quarter inches wide by eight and a half inches long. Then we've scored it at four and a quarter inches and also at six and three eighths inches. Then we just grab a bone folder. We just want to score down on those lines. Just give it a really good burnish there on your fold lines because you want it to be able to sit up for you. So that becomes the base of your easel card and then you will need a piece four and a quarter inches by four and a quarter inches which we will glue to there but as I'm doing some sponging I'll also have a piece of shimmery white cardstock which measures four and two eighths by four and two eighths so once I finish sponging then I'll adhere it to there and then we'd adhere it onto here. So we'll just start with the sponging. Now this is shimmery white. Everyone knows me. I like to use shimmery white cardstock from Stamping Up to do my sponging. So just grab the ink pad, which is Old Olive and a stamping up sponge. I'll just zoom out a little bit. Now I'm just going to dab it because and I always start off on my grid paper because I just want it light first because I'd rather be able to add more colour and I'm just going to be going along the bottom and up the sides or pretty much to the top because we're going to do our clouds after we've stamped our flowers that we're going to be stamping on the cardstock. This is quite a nice little quick card to make and it's just something a bit different it's you know you've got the nice easel card look rather than just a plain card and it, they're just so easy to make. Now I'll just go up the other side just coming into the middle when I don't have very much left on the sponge and as you know, if you've watched my other tutorials, you just keep building up your ink that's coming on to you. Because you can always add, but you can't take away if you end up, if it ends up being too dark. And we'll be stamping the flowers first once I've sponged this in green. Now I just want to be coming more up in the up into the circle area now. And don't worry too much if you do end up with a blotch with this technique because we're going to be stamping over the sponge area anyway. 
which will cover an, a lot of it. Just need a bit more for it to be a little bit greener, just going up the sides. And this is one of my favourite techniques, as everybody knows that has watched my tutorials. I do love, I spend many hours sponging, I just really love the technique. And it is better to take your time in doing it. When I do a tutorial, I'm trying to do it a bit quicker for you so it doesn't go on forever just with the sponging. And we're going to bring, bring in clouds in anyway, so. And we're going to be going over a little bit of that greenery with our cloud colour, which we're going to be doing. So you can see I've got a little spot there, but I'm not going to worry about it because the flower is going to cover that. So. As you see, I've just mainly sponged around the bottom up to about the middle and then right up both sides. That's the first step. Then using the Wild About Flowers stamp set from Stamping Up. If you open this one, it's a photo polymer stamp set which is really good because they even have it numbered for you. So we're using this stamp set here which is number one and it tells me that these little petals are number one so they go with that one and they've got two and three so you've got three sorts there that that you can use we're going to be using this one and these little ones here okay so I've already got that up on my block and I'm going to use the old olive again because it's going to come out a lot darker. Because remember, we sponged with old olive, but because we did a bit on up, we did it slowly. It's not going to be as deep a colour in the sponge look. But once we stamp with it, it it's going to be a lot stronger colour. So I'm going to start by. There's no wrong or right way, so just whatever you want to do. Just going to stamp one there. Go in from this corner. So you can see the full strength of the old olive is a completely different colour to the sponge look. Then I want to bring one in. And it's really good with the photopolymer because I can see exactly where I'm stamping. I want to just bring this one up a bit higher. So that's, that's, that's looking really nice like that. Now I'm just going to use a bit of rich raspberry. And I've already got my petals stamped up on my acrylic block so I'm just going to stamp them. And I can just see where my petals need to go. So I'm just going to line them up. So you can see how easy it is. I stamped into the wrong one, didn't I? That's alright. I can just do it again. That's a good thing about it. doesn't matter. I've done that before. So I'm just going to stamp over that old olive. Because I want these... I want the buds to be rich raspberry. See? There's no mistakes in craft. You can always fix them. So 
So then we've got that, like that's quite nice. I do really love this stamp set. Now, with my original easel card, I went right up there, but I'm just going to put, I think with these ones, I'm just going to put a couple on the edge. So, that's where the grid paper is really good. So just bring in a couple there. Then into the rich raspberry and that's just I just need a couple of buds on there Back into the rich raspberry so I need I just stamp that bud first So I'm just going to clean my stamp off and what I'm going to do is just use just on the corner of my stamp pad just stamp up one of the buds. And if you wanted to, you could just ink up a bit of the old olive, right? Stamp it off and just put and just in the spaces at the bottom there. So it gives you the effect that they're behind the ones that we stamped first. And I might just clean off my stamp, just ink up one of the buds and put it there. Ink up that one bud again. So you can see the tricks that you can do when it's when you've got a photopolymer stamp set because you can see exactly I might even stamp that one without even inking back up again and that's it so I think that come out really nice right that that's come up really nice so we'll get rid of the rich raspberry before I make him another mistake and ink up in that. And now I'm going to grab some soft sky to do my clouds. Now with the soft sky I've already cut out using Stamping Up's one and three quarter inch scallop circle punch. I've just cut out a, a scallop circle and I'm just going to grab a new sponge now I'm just going to put it there up there and what I'm going to do is ink that up ink it off a little bit and just start on the circle and just follow the circle round Just have a look under there without moving it. Doesn't matter, yeah, it's fine. Then about there. So you can see the general idea how I do my clouds. 
you can just do the edge of the soot right on the edge of the scallop first and then when there's hardly any ink on you can go out so you're putting a bit of very light blue sky doesn't matter if you're going over to the green because that's good because you're blending it all in so you can see my clouds are starting to appear so I might just bring some blue well there's hardly any on my pat on my sponge just so it does blend into that green Then we need to do some more. And we'll bring that over to there. It's just wherever you want your clouds to be. And it doesn't matter that it, they're going over into the flowers. And see what lovely effect it is just using this little scallop punch I mean you can use a bigger one you can use a smaller one it's entirely up to you and then I think just one more cloud over this flower without even inking back up and then I'm going to just because I've hardly got any any ink on there now but I just want to put a real little bit so I might just ink up a little bit but just then really damp it off and it's just bringing in a really light blue underneath where we've put the stronger colour of blue. I always start on the green when I'm doing this and I want to bring a bit more blue in. I always start on the green because it doesn't, doesn't matter if you're bringing in a bit of blue on the side at the top. Just start about halfway up and bring it in. So I'm just going to do a little bit on that side. So just bringing that in. That's what I wanted, a bit more blue just above those flowers. I think that's just about it there, our sponging. So you can see the effect that it has and it, with the clouds all coming in there. So then what we want to do, we want to adhere it to the four and a quarter by four and a quarter piece. So I normally would use a wet glue but I'm just going to use some snow just for time's sake and you can see that I get more on my grid pad than I do anywhere else and I'll just bring that piece in and line it up on the score line of my grid paper So it's got the nice pumpkin pie around the border there as well. It's just really, I really love those colours. So that's Old Olive, Rich Raspberry, and what was the other one we used? 
soft sky. Okay, so then we can bring in this piece and then I have a piece from the 12 by 12 Brights paper stack for which I'm going to glue on here which is 4 and 1 eighths by 4 and 1 eighths and your card's going to sit up on there so we're just going to put it on this big piece here so like that so it's going to you can have that lovely nice little green then we're going to stick it onto here now normally I would use wet glue but because it just gives me that bit of time frame to move it if I don't get exactly where I want it. Like that. So you only want to glue the bottom the bottom part onto here. So we want to get it pretty exact. And I would recommend you use wet glue because it would just be a lot easier for you. But I fluked it so it's fine. Then we're going to have the, on the back here because when it stands up, I always like to finish off these two. I like to have corresponding colours on the back here. So I've just cut two by four and one eighths by two inches and I'm just going to glue them onto the back I think it just finishes off the card rather than just leaving it like cardstock but that's entirely up to you it's just it's just what I do one piece there So this is from the Brights Collection 12 by 12 inch paper stack. A lot of lovely colours in there. And I just love it how Stamping Up corresponds everything across the board with their embellishments, with absolutely everything. So then I'll just pop that on there. So it just gives it that finished look. On the back and I think it really does make it look a lot better now you just got to fiddle with see how it's sitting down that's good because then we're going to put up there so I just stamped um, from the same sense stamp set world about flowers I just cut a piece of um, whisper white and I'm just going to add some dimensionals so you just need to have something here so that when this stands it can sit behind so I'll just grab my dimensionals and I'm just going to pop them on there because this is going to give it height and you, sh you saw with the one I did originally I know I'm overdoing it with the dimensionals but you saw with the first one I made that I showed you I'll show you again I just tied some ribbon on it and when it stands it just sits behind the ribbon I've used buttons I've used brads it just depends what you want to do but I thought I'd just do it just with a little sentiment seeing there's no sentiment on the main card just one more so I'll just have it so I 
I will turn it, I do apologise, I'm, you can't see what I'm doing, but you will see that I just need to see where it's going to sit. So, so I've just put it, popped it down there, so it sits up like that. And you could leave it like that, but I think I'll just grab some candy dots. And the pumpkin pie. And this is from the Bright Selection. I just like to use a pair of tweezers. I find them easier. And it's not... I most probably should have used my pokey tool. Just didn't pick up the glue with it. There we go. It's better. You could put rhinestones or pearls. Even glue a little bit of little, really tiny buttons from the Brights collection. But if you do use buttons, make sure you use the fine tip glue pen to glue your buttons. And then that sits up. Just like that. And then it's just going to sit up behind there. So I hope you'll give that a try. This is the original one I did the other day. Um, and as you can see, I've just used ribbon to hold mine in place and I did a little sentiment up here. And I also sponged all this square where today I've just put, um, to save time, I've put designer series paper there for you. but. I sponge that square and then I stamp the flowers on that as well before adding the ribbon. So I hope you'll give that one a try. It is a lovely little four and a quarter inch by four and a quarter inch easel card. And I really thank you for spending some time with me today. And I really look forward to seeing you in my next tutorial.